Now, if you're looking at the picture in the textbook and you like pictures, I'm going to walk through this real quick because we got to finish chapter in like 30 minutes, okay? Go ahead and time. Here's step one, right? This guy looks like a dead cell, right? Remember I said he's an APC. He goes around looking for antigens, right? That's his job. He finds something that doesn't belong. He will internalize it and then do what? Present it and say, hey, look at this. This does not belong in here. That's what he's doing, right? Okay. Now, again, he's an immune cell. So he's going to have what? MHC1 as well as MHC2. Let's first focus on MHC1. So right now, we've got some epitope, right? Some epitope that's bound to MHC1. And at that point, a TC guy with his what? TCR. Here's a close-up, right? This is a T cell. WCD8, okay, T cell with his CCR will buy the epitope that's also bound to what? <coughs> MHC1. But even with that going on, remember, they're just doing this, right? That's what they're doing. They're, they're hooking up. But even with that, it is not enough to turn that T C cell. It's not enough, right? You actually need the T helper guy to fully turn him on. They not dead, and I agree. They don't put a dad on there right here, okay? Nothing. <coughs> Now, remember, this guy also has what? MH2, right? MH2. There's that same little antigen, or epitope rather. Okay. Now, on the MH2, here is your TH cell, right? He bonds with his TCR to that guy, and now he's turned on. He's ready, right? He is now what? Activated, right? He sees that little green guy that that doesn't belong in here. Take him out, right? So at this point, okay, he now becomes what? When he's activated, he's now what? TH1. And TH1 activates who again? TC. TC, okay? So remember, I'm not going to get into interleukins, right? I'm going to spare you that. Why I could make you memorize which interleukin does what, but I'm going to spare you that much, okay? But you should understand that when TH1 shows up, he does what? Turn that guy on, right? Correct? Then I talk about that? TC is now activated. When he receives a signal from TH1, and when TC is activated, all that means is he makes copies of himself, right? That's it. See how he's making copies of himself? I said a small percentage go off as what? Memory, Memory cells. cells. So they will actually remember that green guy that started the whole process. Make sense? So that when you see that same green guy again, guess what? You don't need that whole song and dance. Make sense? Right? You don't need it because he knows it, and he's going to go right into action. Make sense? going to go right and kill it. Now these guys, as I said before, they are activated, which means at this point they're what? Self-simulating. All that means is they can make more copies of themselves. They can be activated without help from who? This guy or that guy. Remember that? Remember that? Because in order for him to be turned on, he needs his help and his help, correct? But when you get down to self-simulation, they can activate their own cells at that point. They don't need any help, make sense? So that's if you're trying to understand the picture. But I gave you the words minus what the interleukins, right? Okie doke. Now, I'm not going to spend time with this because simply put, this guy's activated, and the only thing he's going to do is cause the infected cell to do what? Kill itself by what? Apoptosis. Okay, so that's all you have to worry about. Basically, the memory T cells, that's a small set of the activated TC, right? You should know that. So a memory T cell was an activated who? TC. This is some good stuff. Oh, I mean, this is real hard. I'm telling you. I'm going to do it on purpose to make sure you've been listening to me, right? I'm being serious. You should know that a memory T guy used to be a TC, but he would also decide, and he's going to live for a couple of years, okay? He's going to hang out in the lymphoid tissues, like say maybe the spleen or lymph nodes, he's going to hang out there, right? He's going to chill there for a while. And if he sees the same epitope, right? If he sees the same epitope that got the whole thing started in the first place, he is ready, right, to go into action. He doesn't have to wait for signals, right? He's going to go right into action and kill that cell that's presenting that epitope. Make sense? No, that's a good test question. Yeah. Like that. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on T cell regulation because you should understand it, right? You already, you already know it. To turn on a TC, you need two signals, right? That's a lot of regulation just to keep them all in check. We just talked about it. That's simply put, right? So that's T cell regulation. You need what? Multiple signals in order to fully 
activates a T C cell from the get go because they are killers, right? They kill other cells. You don't want them turning on by one signal, right? You need two to get them fully turned on. That's a good self check. I agree. That's a good self check. Now let's get into the humoral immunity. This is now what? When I say humoral fluid and B cells. B cells with antibodies. Very good. Very good. I like that. Good job. So again, we're attacking what? Exogenous, meaning outside the cell, pathogens, so stuff in the blood. Blah, blah, blah. You got two types. T independent, and I mentioned it with, uh, for some strange reason, I just got your name, Andrew. I'm like, I just looked at you and said, <laughs> you just mentioned it, Andrew. Andrew was mentioning about what to do if you got this strange virus. I said, the best you probably can do is this. T cell independent humoral immunity. You could do that because you don't need T cells for that. But I'll tell you right now, it's not very good. It's not good. The best one is the T cell dependent, right? Humoral immunity. That's the best one, okay? Because with the T cells activated, you can actually make B cells that are memory cells at this point, okay? So let's get into the two types. This is good stuff. Now, this picture is represented, because it's real simple. This picture is representing T cell independent humoral immunity. Now, real quick, how do you know it's T cell independent? It's real easy. How do you know? Look at my picture. No T -cells. There's no T cells. Do you see a T cell? I see B cell, BCR, Ys, plasma cells, Ys. There is not a T cell in sight, correct? Which means it tells you automatically that you don't need a T cell to do that. Makes sense? So it's T cell independent. Real quick. Basically, you need, for this app, you need T cell independent antigens. I repeat, you need T cell independent antigens. Now these antigens tend to be very large, so they tend to be large antigens, and they have a lot of repetitive epitopes, which simply means their epitopes are the same and they're repetitive. So if you look at this antigen, this big thing right here, you see how it has the same shape? See that? That's what I'm talking about. It's a T cell independent antigen. They're big, they have really one kind of epitope, and they're repetitive. Now you can find these types of antigens on capsules, for example, because capsules are basically sugar coats. So sugar coats or capsules, or even flagella. Okay, so these are your examples of what T cell independent antigens know the characteristics. I just spelled it out for you. Now, for this, you got your B cell, correct? This is what? Humoral immunity, which means B cells, right? You got your B cells. And they have their what? BCRs. And this particular BCR will recognize this shape. Remember, each BCR recognizes only one shape, right? So we have a match. We have a match. And at that point, that B cell will be activated, right? It's going to be activated. And what does that even mean? They make clones of themselves, right? See how that clones now? At this point, the clones are what? Plasma cells because plasma cells secrete out their BCRs and secreted BCRs are basically what? Antibodies. Make sense? So this is how it works. This is kind of what we talked about last week, right? Right. Now here's the deal. I said it's a really poor response, okay? Because we don't have the T cells helping us. Because we don't have T cells helping us, we don't make memory cells. And without memory cells, you'll see the same epitope, which means you got to do the whole thing all over again. Make sense? So you don't make memory cells. Why? Because there are no T cells involved. Make sense? Excuse me. Make sense? Look it up. Now, this type of uh, humor immunity is where in children, primarily children, are more susceptible to T cell independent antigens because their immune system is still developing. So you can see this with adults, because by the time you're your age, your immune system is fully working. So if you see bacterial capsules or flagella, you can tackle it, you can take care of it. But in children, okay, their immune system is immature. So they are really susceptible to bacterial infections with capsules or flagella. So for example, homophilus influenza causes meningitis in children. And you don't hear that in adults, though. No. But in children, they can get meningitis. Because really, uh, homophilus influenza has a capsule. And I just mentioned to you that capsules have large 
repetitive epitopes. So we're not going to need T-cells for this. But in children, they can get meningitis. So this is why kids, babies, get vaccines against homophilus influenza, because they have no way to protect themselves. Like you can. Make sense? Keep that in mind. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Now let's talk about T-cell, keyword, dependent, humoral immunity. This is where you actually make what? Memory cells out of this. Here we go. Oh, boy. It's some of the same stuff, right? It's very similar to how we activate it with the TC cells, right? It's very similar. Again, you start off with some ATC, right? Who's ATC? Antigen presenting cell. Some dendritic cell. Somebody, right? Found an antigen. And he's like, hey, look at my hand, right? Okay. Again, they travel to a lymph node. Takes a couple of days, right? They travel to a lymph node with their little antigen. And they get there. And they're waiting for some T helper cell. So here's one key difference. Here's one key difference, right? And the previous section, I'm trying to help you out. On the previous section with TC activation, it was the APC with this MHC1 that started off, right? Yeah. But with this, right, with B cell activation, we now have an APC presenting an epitope on its MHC2. That's one key difference right there, okay? And same thing, something similar happens. When this guy gets to a lymph node, we have now a T helper cell there, just waiting. And he's going to have the matching TCR to bind his MHC2, correct? Again, remember this? They do this, right? They got to connect because I said T cells cannot do what? They cannot bind epitopes directly, correct? They only bind epitopes when, when they're attached to an MHC, correct? Okay. In this case, the MHC2. Now at that point, at that point, that TH cell is now activated, which means he now becomes type 2 helper cell, or TH2. And I said earlier that TH2 guys, they do what? They activate B cells, correct? So here you go. So he's now activated. He's now TH2. He's going to activate B cells. Now this part here, I put in quotes here, quotes, parentheses, we get tired. This is now an independent event. I don't want you to think that this here is connected with anything above here. Literally, this here is an independent event. So somewhere else in your body, somewhere else, you have some B cell, okay? Some B cell that happens to have the same antigen or epitope on his MHC2, okay? So far so good? So you have some B cell somewhere else. He happens to run into the same antigen with the same epitope. He's going to present that on his MHC2. So again, this is what, an independent event here. Now somewhere along the line, somewhere along the probably in your lymph node, okay, these guys look up. So the TH2 guy, the one that we talked about right here, remember this guy? He is going to bind that B cell that has the same epitope that turned him on in the first place. So I repeat, okay? This is what, an independent event, right? Some B cell somewhere in your body finds the same epitope. He's going to process it, correct? And present it on his own, MHC2. He makes his way to the lymph node where that TH2 guy is waiting, right? And they now do what? They just do this, right? They hook up. And when they hook up, guess what? That B cell is now activated. It's almost like with the TC guy being what? Activated. Make sense? Now, what does that even mean? When I say a cell, either a TC cell or now a B cell, when I say it's activated, what does that even mean? It makes clones of itself, correct? That's all that it means. It makes clones of itself. And at that point, some of them, most of them, are now plasma cells. So when you see plasma cells, that's what? A B cell that's doing what? What's the plasma cell doing? Dropping antibodies. Dropping antibodies, exactly, exactly. So when you see plasma cell, that's now your B cell doing what? Secreting out antibodies like crazy, like a thousand per second. I mean, that's all they do. That's all they do. Secrete out many, 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 many what? Antibodies against that one epitope, right, that started the whole process. Make sense? Some of those activated B cells actually go on to be what? A memory cell. Now, memory cells, they're not plasma cells, which should tell you they don't do what? Make antibodies. 
Well, oh, no. secrete. Okay, there we go. They don't secrete antibodies. They have BCRs, right? Mm -hmm. They have BCRs, but they don't secrete their antibodies. They're just memory cells. Okay. So they're hanging on to their. Exactly. They're hanging on to their lives. They got the memory. They just ain't turning loose. Exactly. And they got this right. They got the memory, and they're just waiting for that same epitope to come along. And when they see that same epitope, they're now ready to go and proliferate themselves. Okay. Now, oh boy, picture time. This one, oh, I got it. I'm five hours. Got me better now. <laughs> Real quick, you're welcome. Real quick, this is if you want to understand the picture, right? Some of you may want to do that if you're at home. Okay. Real quick. Here, oh, here he is. There's our digitic cell, right? And now we're using what? MHC2. And basically, he does what? Present his epitope, right? Remember our song and dance? He hooks up with what? A CD4 guy, a TH guy. And when that happens, guess what? He's now, oh boy, there it is, TH2. So all this is saying is when they hook up, right, when they do this, that TH guy now becomes who? TH2, okay? So he's now activated. So here he is, he's ready, okay? Remember this whole thing? I said this is what? Independent event, right? These are what? B cells, correct? They're B cells, and they happen to meet the same what? Epitope, and they present that on their own MHC2. So far so good? Remember this is happening somewhere else. Now, this B cell will make his way to the lymph node, and that's where he finds this guy. See that guy? He's now ready. See that guy? He's now TH2, where they're going to bind. They're going to buy, and it's showing you that right here. So here's that guy, TH2. Here's your B cell. See how they're connected? See that? They're doing this, right? Do that. See when they connect? When they connect, guess what? You do what? Turn that B cell on, correct? You activate that B cell, and what does that mean? Either do what? Make clones, right? So these guys are clones. They're plasma cells. How do you know? These guys are floating around. Oh, let me give you a quiz. Who is this one right here? Who is that? IGL? Yeah, it's a good test. I said they form what? Pentamers when they're secreted. That's a dead giveaway, right? That's IGM right there. I said that's the first antibody made. I said that, correct? That's always the first one. IGM is always the first one. And then you go into IgG. So these guys are probably the IgG. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. Now, some of the active B cells become what? Memory cells, because as you said, Milton, they literally hang on to their wives. Makes sense? They don't lose them, they hang on to them so that when they find what? The same epitope, correct? The same epitope, Recognize. they will literally turn into that. Makes sense? They'll go into this mode, which means they start secreting out like crazy antibodies. Now, these guys live for a good long time, about 20 years, literally 20 years in your lip nodes. Hit it. So only. B cells that have to do one thing. They have to literally secrete antibodies. As long as the B cell that's holding on to his Y, he's not a plasma cell. He can't do it. He has to lose his Ys to be a plasma cell. Oh, no. Now, real quick, I think I got into this. I mentioned this, right? The majority of the activated B cells, right? They go on to be what? Plasma cell? They don't live a long time because they spend a huge amount of energy secreting antibodies. Like literally a thousand per second. They just spend this, they spend themselves out. They don't live that long. A couple of days and they're done. Because they're so active. Okay? They're really active. Okay, their antibodies, right, that are secreted, they're gonna be what? Matching to that epitope that did what started the whole process in the first place. They're short lived, they die, but their antibodies can live a couple of weeks at best, okay? So the cells die within days, but their antibodies persist for about a few weeks, okay? To give you some protection. Now with the memory, okay, I mentioned that already, okay? Memory cells do not, right? They do not secrete antibodies. They don't do that. They never become plasma cells. Their BCRs, right? Their Ys are stuck in the membrane. Their Ys would be what? 
binding to the epitope that did what? Started the whole process, right? Okay. Now these guys, I mentioned already, these guys live a good long time, a good more, more than 20 years, literally, more than 20 years. These memory B cells are hanging out in your lymphoid tissue. Okay. That's the basis of immunity right there, makes sense? 20 years or more, they're hanging out waiting for that same epitope to come along. That's why if you got the chicken pox, you don't get it again, makes sense? You've got literally memory cells waiting for chicken pox. And as soon as you see it, you take care of it immediately, makes sense? You don't ever get it anymore. So we mentioned that, okay? So you basically kick up antibody production when you see that same epitope. This is why you never get your box twice. That's why. Now, real quick, we're almost done. We're, we're almost done. Two more slides to go. This slide is telling you basically, how do I summarize this slide? This is summarizing the production of antibodies in the T cell dependent pathways. This is the T cell the dependent pathway, how do you know? Because we're talking about what? Memory cells, right? I said, and if you're making memory B cells, you've got to use what? T cell dependent. You've got to do that way. This is basically how do you make your antibodies, okay? Real quick. Let's just talk about getting your tetanus shot, like you should do about every 10 years or so, okay? Now, your tetanus shot basically has the tetanus toxoid, okay? A toxoid is basically the inactivated toxin itself. So you take the toxin, you inactivate it, and that's basically your tetanus shot, literally. Okay. Now, when you get your shot, and it hurts, that one hurts, by the way, it does hurt for a good while, okay. when you get it, you do not start to make antibodies against that tetanus toxoid immediately. You have a lag time, Why? Right? I just talked about the whole process, right? You gotta do all those signals, all that song and dance, right? You gotta have what? A, uh, APC, finding that toxoid, he has to present it, he has to walk his way to the lymph node, right? We have to have the right uh, TH guy to bind it, he becomes CH2, then you have to have the right a B cell to find that same, so it takes a long time, right, for all that to happen, makes sense, it's a long time for that to happen. Oh boy, so by day three, you finally start to make some antibodies, right? Ooh, that's a long time. Again, I said what? You make IgM first. That's always the first antibody made. And then eventually, you get the IgG going. A long time out, right? Ooh, look at that. By day 15, you got lots of it going out. But that's a long time. Okay. But that's when you first get the shot. Now, let's say, for example, like next year, hopefully not, you were exposed to the, the actual toxin. Goodness, no, right? But if you have to take the shot, it's okay, right? So next year, a year later, you're exposed to the actual toxin. This is what's happening, right? Exposed to toxin. Look at that. Boop. You know why? Because look, the take home message and the primary response, this is what you're doing. You're trying to make what? Memory B cells, right? That's why it takes a very long time. You're making memory B cells, right? That's what you're doing. That's what you do that lag time. But by the time you get to what? Secondary response, you've already made what? Remember. B cells, right? They're already there. And as soon as they see that tetanus toxin, they're what? Activated, which means they start immediately, look at that, immediately, you kick up those antibodies, you neutralize that toxin, you never get sick, makes sense? So you should understand primary response, which is what? Making memory cells versus secondary response. Memory cells are activated and they start doing what? Making those antibodies, correct? Look at that. Not even a day. Maybe by day three, you have enough IgG to take out the toxin. You neutralize it. You never get sick, correct? I will understand that. Real quick, we're about to end, which means you get a quiz tonight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is going to be a great quiz tonight. Okay. Types of acquired immunity. There's some good stuff. Why? Well, because it's practical, right? Don't you get sick? Don't you want to understand why you get sick? Don't you want to understand if you get the flu shot, why you don't get the flu? It's good stuff, isn't it? That's fine. That's either A, your immune system is efficient, B, you're not exposed to pathogens. It could be a number of things as to why some people hardly ever get sick. It doesn't mean they can't get sick. They just don't get sick often. They might have a very efficient immune system. They may not be exposed to pathogens. So it just depends on the person. But they can. They have the ability to get sick. They do. Okay, 
let's real quick talk about this real cool types of acquired immunities. How can you get acquired immunity? So basically protection from getting sick in the first place. Okay. You got two types, naturally acquired and artificially acquired. Again, this is how you get immunity against a pathogen so you don't get the flu this season. You got naturally versus artificial. Now, naturally is real simple, right? This is when your body responds to antigens that you actually meet, right? So this is like you go into a daycare and you get some cold. I mean, literally. When you come to class and your classmate has the flu, you didn't get your flu shot, you get the flu, right? You're going to have some natural immunity against it because you acquired it, what? Naturally. In other words, you got sick. Make sense? You just got sick. Now, artificially acquired means you are responding to antigens that were introduced with a vaccine. So in other words, you didn't get sick, but someone injected the antigens into you so that you can make a response against those antigens. Make sense? So naturally means you just got sick. And artificially means we just gave to you in your arm. Hit it. So it's artificial like if you get the flu shot and you get sick from that? Yes. You don't use it. Or what's the example? You get some vaccine. Tetanus. It could be any vaccine. Usually you have either antibodies or you have antigen. We'll get into the difference because if you get the antigen, you should not get sick because you're not responding to the pathogen. You're responding to something from it, like a capsule or the flagellum or something from that bacterium that should make you sick. Now if you get sick from the flu virus, good to chapter 17, you had an attenuated virus. Basically that virus was on, but a weakened form of it, which means it can make you sick. That's a whole other chapter, like next chapter. Makes sense? So it depends on the vaccine and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, okay, so naturally, artificial, real quick. Now, on these two types, they can either be active or passive. You're like, huh? Okay, here we go. Active just means, active means your body is literally making antibodies against the antigen. So your body is literally making antibodies against that antigen. So you can have a vaccine, for example, and your body is now making antibodies against that antigen. Well, that's going to be active, makes sense. Your body is actively trying to make antibodies against whatever got shot to your arm. Now, in passive, passive means you are literally receiving antibodies that were already made outside of you. So for example, in a horse, for example, you can do that in a horse. We take the antibodies from the horse, we clean it up, and we inject it into you. So in other words, you did not make the antibodies. The antibodies came from something or someone else. Like a baby getting it from mom. Exactly, like a baby getting it from its mother. Very good. So let's look at all these combinations that I'm sending home for your quiz, okay? So how do you put them all together? Real quick, okay? This poor baby, okay? He is clearly sick, right? You got something. You got all these rashes. Okay. Now, I would say that whatever it is, he probably won't get it anymore. Makes sense? Whatever it is. It be chicken pox, measles, whatever. I would say whatever's causing this little infection, he might not get it again. Now, since he's actually sick, right, he is going to make antibodies naturally, right? Because he's actually what? He's sick, correct? But so far so good? So far so good? He's sick, right? He's clearly sick. So his body is doing what? Responding to whatever is inside of him to actually make antibodies. So it's real tricky. Active means what? Actively making antibodies. Now how do you encounter the antigen? Okay. How do you encounter the antigen? Natural means you got sick, right? So far so good? Passive, okay, Milton was mentioning about this, okay? So passive and naturally. So naturally means how did mommy, right? How did mommy make her antibodies? She got sick, right? Mommy had the cold. Mommy had the flu, right? Correct? And she's making antibodies against her cold, right? Or her flu, makes sense? So far so good? So mommy got sick. So she's making her antibodies. But if she's breastfeeding, that baby gets the IgA, that's a good test question, right? IgA, why? Secreted in breast milk, that baby gets the IgA from mommy. So since baby gets antibodies from mom, 
correct? That's passive, makes sense? Because baby got antibodies, but baby got antibodies from mommy. So that's passive. But where did mommy get hers? Naturally, right? Mommy was sick. Okay. Now the bottom, you got artificially acquired, which means you got a shot or something in the mouth or a nasal injection, right? So in other words, they did not get sick. Make sense? Correct? The artificial, they're not sick, right? He's sick and she had something. Make sense? Okay. So they never got sick. Now, artificially active, that means this poor kid is eating some vaccine that has antigens in it. Make sense? Which means when his body sees the antigens, guess what? His body will do what? Actually make antibodies against whatever antigen he got in his mouth. Make sense? Correct? So if you know nothing else, you should understand that if it says what? Active, your body's doing what? Your body's doing what? Right. Actively making antibodies. Exactly. All right. Now the last one is still artificial, which means, is she sick? No, right? Artificial means you're never sick. But now it's passive, which means you're not making the antibodies. In this case, you literally are getting the antibodies made somewhere else, injected, they're like preformed antibodies. So you're thinking, well, why would you want to do that, right? Why would you want to have preformed antibodies injected into you? Well, some diseases act real quick. Make sense? Some diseases take no time to take you out. And you don't have time to make your own antibodies. Make sense? You may get uh, stung with some kind of venom, right, from some snake. You don't have time, right, to make memory B cells, correct? You'll be dead by that time. So in other words, if you have some disease that acts fairly quickly, or if you have some venom, venom from a snake or a scorpion, which can take you out fairly quickly, you need antibodies pre-made, make sense? You need those antibodies to neutralize the toxin, correct? So that would be an example of this type of vaccination, make sense? Usually, your vaccines are this type, correct? Usually you have some antigen injected into you, correct? And your bodies do what? Make antibodies against it. Let me ask you this. Here's a good test question. You can go in about 10 minutes. What do you got to do? You got a date or something? Y'all oh, looking antsy. You're like, I got a date coming up. She's holding, holding me up. Here's a good, here's a good, yeah, here's a good test question. I'll let you go seriously. You got to think about which scenarios actually give you memory B cells, okay? Which scenarios, you had multiple, which scenarios actually end up giving you memory B cells? Think of it that way. If you can answer that question, I can send you home. Think about it. Naturally acquired. So she said naturally acquired, absolutely, right? If you get sick, you're going to make memory B cells and memory T cells. And there's another one. What's the second one? What's the second one? Did you actually make memory B cells? From what you've been artificially exposed. Which one? You got two options. Passive. Active. 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 Remember, passive. You got preformed antibodies going into you. They're preformed antibodies. They're not going to stimulate B cell production or anything. They're just already made antibodies, neutralizing some toxin. Comes down to actively being made. Yeah. Exactly. Both ways. Exactly. So if you're actively making your antibodies, you're also actively making memory cells. This poor kid here, he's okay, but he's actually going to do what? Make memory cells so that whatever is in there, he never gets. Make sense? Now this person, she can get that again. Whatever is in there, she can get it again. She can get it again because she's not doing what? She's not making those memory cells. This baby, right, poor baby, not making memory cells. He's getting free antibodies, but it's not making his own memory cells. Not at that age, at least. Make sense? Okey-doke. Y'all have a nice day. See you on.